Hello everybody, my name is Carissa. I am a singer, actress, voiceover actress, and a vocal coach as well. I predominantly perform online with Twitch two times a week right now, and I perform regularly in stage productions when it's not a pandemic. And I also have starred in an opera, a musical, and a straight play. Now, why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you all this because I want you guys to know that if you're a theater nerd out there, if you're a singer nerd, if you're a choir nerd, I get you. I've been there. I totally understand what you're going through. And I specifically today want to talk about getting a music degree. I have two degrees in music and my undergrad, I got my degree in vocal performance and my graduate degree, I got in vocal performance and pedagogy. So just a fancy word for how to teach the thing, right? How to teach the voice specifically. And I am going to tell you things that they do not tell you in music school. Here we go. Ready? Let's do this. Number one, when you get into the real world, when you are done with your degrees, you must audition for theaters that align with your personal values. If a theater is doing something that you don't really agree with, or you don't really like the shows that they put on, or they're doing appropriation, or they're casting people that are specifically not doing the work, or they have people in positions of power that maybe shouldn't be there, don't audition for them. Audition for all of the other companies that are out there regionally to you or um, in the big city that's maybe two, you know, two hours away from you. I have driven to so many different cities and done shows and granted I have the privilege to do that and I'm very, very lucky that I have the privilege to do that. And I understand that. Don't support or audition for the audition companies, or sorry, don't support the companies that don't align with your values as a person. Now, when we were in school, that's really difficult because sometimes there's bureaucracy happening within your department and things may be unbeknownst to you and, and it really feels like you're being pigeonholed into one place, right? If there's something that doesn't align with you and you don't really like how that's going at your school, take a second to think about what's important to you, right? Is it important to get a leading role? Is it important to get the experience? Or is it important to reach out to that regional theater and do an audition instead of auditioning at your school? I'm not saying don't do theater at your school. I'm not saying don't audition for music school productions. I'm saying be wary of the credos that the people in the company keep and how you decide to be associated with that. Number two, when you get into the real world, because I know you are a real human being right now, and when I say real world, I mean when you get into the job sphere, right? When you are out there gigging with everybody else, just like us, right? I want you to know that if you're not getting cast in the shows at your music school or at your theater school, it's not that you don't fit in or that you're never gonna be good enough. It's that the teachers have a very specific idea of how they want to cast. And when you get into the real world, the job gigging world out here, you will realize that you have so many endless opportunities because it's not just one show a semester that you're auditioning for. It's how many shows are happening in my area in like a 20 mile radius. And who can I audition for? And what kind of group is, are my friends being a part of right now that they want to create a recital and, and how can we do that? The opportunities are endless when you do not have a curriculum telling you to do a certain thing, right? The curriculum is very, very important and we all need to learn parts of the curriculum, right? There are still parts of music school curriculum that is valid for out here. I promise, I promise. But the opportunities for auditions are endless when you get out here. There is work for everyone out here. Everyone. Because maybe that company that you've been wanting to work for 
in the job sphere that you're about to enter hasn't been developed yet, hasn't been born into existence yet. And maybe when you graduate, that person finally decides to open the doors for their theater. You don't know what's out there. Know that there are more opportunities for you out there and continue to hone your skills. Third thing that they do not teach you in music school, that I was not taught in music school. Your audition book does not need to be a sparkling diamond. It needs to include music that you are uniquely good at and that you actually enjoy singing. Let's talk about that. I learned that through a synthesis of my own philosophy of teaching and singing and doing things and through a young artist program called Spotlight on Opera run by the amazing Cindy Sadler. I didn't learn that as part of my curriculum. When I went to go to my young artist program, I realized I didn't have an audition package because I was focusing so much on technique. Know that your audition package does not have to be sparkling and beautiful and perfect in every single way. Sing stuff you like doing, sing stuff that you feel good doing and continue to do that kind of stuff, right? So in conclusion, when you graduate music school, there's a lot of things that you need to fill in when you go into the job sphere, when you go into the job sphere, when you go into the real world, right? But use the information that you have learned in school and apply it because that transfer is always not going to be as smooth as we think it's gonna be. But I promise you, if you follow some of those, those nuggets, you're gonna avoid so many things that I had to deal with when I graduated music school. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you in the next video.